I am Rear Admiral Hanlon. And as commander of Joint Task Force 7, I should like to present this brief film report on the highlights of Operation Red Wing. I want to point out to those of you who might have a deeper interest, not fulfilled by this report, that there are available more detailed reports, such as Commander Joint Task Force 7, final report on Operation Red Wing, the Armed Forces Special Weapons Project, technical films, written reports, and short technical films produced by the task force overseas. My chief of staff and deputies will assist in this presentation. Red Wing, the sixth series of nuclear tests conducted in the Pacific Proving Ground, was nearly three times the magnitude of that of any previous one. The purpose of Red Wing was twofold to test 17 experimental weapons and devices, to conduct some 43 weapons effects tests and diagnostic measurements associated with the 17 shots. The cost of Red Wing was on the order of $160 million and did not include the cost of nuclear materials or the design and production of the devices. Some 120 million went for the cost of participation by the Army, Navy, Air Force, Joint Task Force 7, Armed Forces Special Weapon Project, and the Atomic Energy Commission. The remainder was experimental expenses, which included approximately 24 million, covering the expendable scientific construction. This is the price paid for testing operations necessary for the advancement of nuclear weapons and conducted in a remote area of the Pacific to provide the ultimate in safety factors. Obviously, an operation of the magnitude of Red Wing requires a great deal of support in terms of people, aircraft, ships, and money. A complex but extremely flexible command organization and an elaborate communication network. Organizationally, Red Wing carried a typical joint task force staff of about 170 people divided about equally among the three services. The command was organized into five task groups. Task group 7.1, task group 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, and 7.5. 7.1 consisted of about 1,200 scientific and military personnel and were concerned with positioning, arming, and detonating all weapons and devices. It also conducted weapons effects tests and diagnostic measurement programs. 7.2, about 1,200 Army personnel provided ground security, operated communications, provided certain logistic support, including 550 vehicles of all types, and some $1.5 million worth of signal equipment. The Navy Task Group 7.3, with some 22 ships, 31 small craft, 37 aircraft, and approximately 6,000 personnel, provided security and safety patrols in the danger area. Service ship transportation between the Pacific Proving Ground and the Zone of the Interior, a small boat and helicopter transport at Bikini Atoll, shipboard command and communication facilities, and support of numerous scientific projects. The Air Force Task Group 7.4, with some 2,300 personnel and about 130 aircraft, exercised air control and directed operation of all test and support aircraft, was responsible for search and rescue functions, provided weather service and air transport at Anuitak Atoll and between Bikini and Anuitak Atolls. Task Group 7.5, with about 2,000 civilian personnel, provided base logistic support, built structures for effects and diagnostic measurement programs, and operated a boat pool at Anuitak Atoll. We planned Red Wing so as to utilize the two atoll concept, that is, large hard shots were fired at Bikini, and the small, relatively easy ones at the Anuitak Atoll. Actually, on two occasions, shots were fired nearly simultaneously at both atolls. This was an innovation unique to Red Wing. From the very beginning, great emphasis was placed on the safety 
of the personnel in the Pacific Proving Ground, natives of the Marshall Islands, shipping and air traffic. For the latter part of Castle and for Red Wing, the danger area was increased to about 400,000 square miles to afford adequate protection. The smaller area was the air control area. A continuous search of the large area was conducted by a squadron of Navy patrol aircraft. Better weather information and therefore more reliable forecasting was realized through a weather central staffed with highly qualified personnel from all services. The acquiring of a new type of weather balloon operable above 90,000 feet, development of the WASP high altitude weather sounding missile affected to altitudes of about 100,000 feet and launched from destroyer weather ships and construction of four weather stations by the task force to augment the existing Pacific Area Weather Service. In the RAD safe area, we had an effective fallout prediction unit in headquarters. Another innovation was equipping of this unit with fallout computers recently developed by the National Bureau of Standards and the Sandia Corporation. 17 RAD safe monitoring stations were located throughout the Pacific area to provide further protection. In the interest of fish life protection, marine radiological surveys were made of large areas in Pacific Proving Ground and vicinity by Navy ships using scientific personnel of the Atomic Energy Commission, Division of Biology and Medicine. This was done first about the middle of the operation and again after the operation terminated. The Scripps Institute conducted continuous oceanographic analyses of fallout areas. I should like to digress for a moment to comment on the official observer program sponsored by the Atomic Energy Commission and the Department of Defense. During Red Wing, we had six separate groups of responsible military and civilian officials. And in addition, large numbers of technical observers visited the Pacific Proving Grounds. As a result, the military representatives and high government officials obtained an understanding of the business which should be of great value to them and their parent organizations. Of special interest was the press and federal civil defense agency observer groups. The press group consisted of some 15 media representatives from the field of television, radio, newspapers, magazines, and periodicals. A like number from the Federal Civil Defense Agency from all over the country witnessed the shots. These groups witnessed the Cherokee airdrop, which was declared an open shot for this purpose. Due to weather delays postponing Cherokee for 18 days, the group was able to witness the La Crosse shot also declared an open shot for Red Wing. Judging from reports and comments, it would appear that the press visit resulted in a substantial contribution to public relations for the military services and the Atomic Energy Commission. It is felt that these programs were justified. At this point, I should like to ask Dr. Ogle, my scientific director, to provide a resume of the weapons development highlights on Red Wing. Dr. Ogle. Castle, in 1954, gave us thermonuclear devices that could be carried only in our largest planes. We needed weapons now that could be carried externally on fighter aircraft or that could be dropped by light and medium bombers. And we needed small diameter, lightweight thermonuclear weapons for use in conjunction with the missiles being developed by the armed forces. Thus, a major part of the development effort of the two weapons laboratories Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory and University of California Radiation Laboratory at Livermore, for the year and a half preceding Red Wing, went into the design of smaller and lighter thermonuclear devices. In addition, we made strenuous efforts to reduce the size and weight of our fission weapons, perhaps at the expense of efficiency, to meet present and future requirements of small missiles, artillery, and ground-to-air missiles. Code name La Crosse, 39 kilotons. Code name Cherokee, 3.8 megatons.
Osage, 1.7 kilotons. Erie, 15 and a half kilotons. Seminole, 13 kilotons. Flathead, 375 kilotons. Dakota, 1.1 megatons. Apache, 1.9 megatons. You're on 270 kilotons. Mohawk, 350 kilotons. The main contribution of activity to fall out from such devices comes from the radioactive fragments produced by that fission. Such fallout may seriously contaminate the region close to a detonation. It may injure or kill people several hundred miles from the point of detonation, Four point seven megatons. Piwa, five megatons. It is clear from a weapons development viewpoint that Operation Red Wing was an outstanding success.